Hi, my name is Damian Josephsberg, and today I'm going to show you how to use the Faro Vantage Laser Tracker to do an internal alignment on a steam turbine. We have an internal alignment steam turbine simulator here, and we have the Faro Vantage Laser Tracker. It's set up on our Maggie bracket. Right now we have it just set on the side of the simulator, but this is a curved surface magnetic bracket and we could also set it inside of the unit if we want to, um, like we generally would if uh, we were setting up in a real turbine. Now, over here, we have the TAM2 Measure 10 software, and that's what we're gonna be using to acquire our readings, set the alignment, and look at the way that the diaphragms are horizontally and vertically deviated from each other from the measured center line. So the first thing I'm going to do is shoot a level plane out of the laser tracker. Let's see, let's see, the first time you say, I'm not going to do this, I'm going to play with my Okay, and the reason I'm doing this is for a sanity check. Um, and also, for some reason, I can't get a really good level plane off of the unit. Then when I go to set my coordinate system, I can use the gravity level plane for my movements for the wire vertical direction. Okay, so now that we measured our plane that's level gravity, I'm now going to measure the group of planes that I need to measure the steam turbine. I'm going to measure a plane that's at the horizontal joint. I'm going to use that for my vertical reference. I'm going to measure a plane on the turbine end of a diaphragm and on the generator end of the diaphragm. That'll allow me to cut the diaphragms into a plane so I can make a coordinate system at those two points. So I'm going to measure the planes. Okay, so I'm going to measure the first plane. And I have this set up in a time interval mode. So it's going to take a reading every time it moves. One inch. All right, so there's my first plane. Now I'm going to measure plane number two. Okay, so now I'm going to measure plane number three on the uh, generator end. Okay, so now I have my three planes. So that's what I want to. Okay, so now I'm going to rename these planes in the software so I know what they are. I bet you will. work, stuck it out there. It's Okay. Okay, now that I've taken my planes, I'm going to take each one of the diaphragms as a cylinder. So I'm going to measure them to the system as a, as a cylinder, starting on the turbine end and moving towards the generator. Okay? Cylinder on the turbine end, or number one, now I'm doing number two. Okay, 
Diaphragm number five. Diaphragm number six for the uh, diaphragm on the generator. And you can see as I'm taking the readings on these diaphragms, as soon as I get over my six my six points, which is the uh, minimum required to determine the geometry of a cylinder, then it also shows me um, my diameter and my out of cylindricity, which would really be the out of round of the cylinder. Now that I have all these readings, I can construct the points in the software to build my turbine and my coordinate system. Okay, so I'm gonna rename my cylinders now. Cylinder number one was started was the turbine end. And then cylinder number six. It's the generator end. Okay. Save the file. Alright, and now I'm gonna construct my different uh, positions that I need to build the coordinate system. First circle I'm going to have is my turbine end, okay, and that is going to be the plane that I shot on my turbine end, and the cylinder. I'm going to cut that cylinder into a plane. Now I'm going to create another circle for the generator end. Oops, and I accidentally made it. Uh, This, this one, I made it. I wanted to make it perpendicular to the plane. Okay, so now I'm going to make a machine axis. Okay, so now I'm going to continue making the coordinate system. Now that I have a, a circle for my turbine end and for my generator end, I'm going to draw a line going in between both of those. So, I'm going to construct a line. It really depends on the turbine end and the generator end. And we're going to call this the machine axis. I don't know what they're going to come back with. You know, last year they cut us down. We asked for like 35 million, they cut us down to 25 million. Okay, so now I have a line going through the machine. And I have a circle on each end that is going to represent the turbine end and the generator end. And I have a measurement plane for the horizontal joint. So now I can create my coordinates. Okay, so I'm going to 
okay? And I want the coordinate system to be weighted on the line going through the machine. So that line is going to be the line that we just created, that's the machine axis. Okay, and that's going to be in the Z direction, that'll be axis. And the next thing that we're going to have is the Y, which is our vertical, normal to the plane that we shot as our horizontal joint. Okay, and that'll be vertically, the Y direction. Okay? Then, the origin, we're going to have this go moving from the turbine end to the generator end. So we'll use the circle from the turbine end as our origin. We're going to hold that to the world that we created with the laser tracker so that we're now going to be moving our coordinate system to the center of the turbine. Okay, so now, you can see here, so now we have all of our base measurements in to view our alignment and to build our coordinate system. You can see here we have the turbine end of the machine, we have the generator end, of the machine, we have the machine axis, which will be the line going through both those positions. Okay, and now we have our coordinate system with the Z going through the axis of the machine, the Y being the vertical, and the X being horizontal. Now I can view the different cylinders of the machine and see how much they're off from that center position. So if I go to uh, cylinder four, for example. Okay, and I'm going to add the X, Y, and Z position. Okay, the Z is going to tell us how far away we are down the axis of the machine, and then we can look at our deviation horizontally for X and vertically for Y. You can see that we have set the coordinate system correctly because if you look at the turbine end circle, it's all zero since that's our origin. And the generator end, the X and Y are set at zeros, but the Z is the length of the machine from the end plane of turbine end to the end plane of the generator end. We can use that as a, as a sanity check. And now we can look at how much the variances are of the horizontal and vertical deviation from every one of the other positions. Okay, and now we can make our movements to each one of our diaphragms. If we want to move it to zero, we would move it exactly the amount that it's off and then take another reading in order to correct the diaphragm. Thank you very much. I'm Damien Josephsburg from Equip, and this is how we use the simulator to do a steam turbine internal 